Hi guys, welcome to the speed build video in The Sims 4. My name is Irene and today I am building my biggest project yet. Today I am building a Times Square. According to Wikipedia, referred to as the center of the universe, the crossroads of the world. It is the junction uh, between a Broadway and a 7th Avenue in Midtown Manhattan in New York City. It is famous for its massive billboards for one Times Square in a building where the ball drops at New Year's Eve. And yes, I'm building it today. But I'm building it not in the state which it is in right now. No, I'm building it in a post-apocalyptic setting because this video is a part in my post-apocalyptic series. In that series I'm building famous buildings, landmarks from all over the world, all in different post-apocalyptic settings. I did London Bridge already, I did Sydney Opera House already, I did a part of the capital of my own country, of Amsterdam, and today it is time for the biggest one yet for Times Square. During my last video, that plane crash build that I did, that lost inspired one, I asked you guys what you wanted to see next, what kind of video you wanted to see next. If you wanted to see a new video in this post-apocalyptic series or maybe in my magic book series. I have a series like that going on on my channel as well. In that series I'm building massive books with magical worlds coming out of them, all in book themes. The last one I did was a Lord of the Rings themed one. But yeah, top comment was a post-apocalyptic build and to be more precise, Times Square. So here we go. <laughs> I had it on a list already. I have a list from buildings that I want to do in this series. Uh, for example, I had Amsterdam on it, I have the Tower of Pisa on it. Some of you guys requested me to do Christ the Redeemer. I haven't got any clue how to realize that yet, <laughs> but I have that on the list as well and Times Square was on it too. So I thought let's just give it a try, but I knew there were some huge challenges <laughs> during this build. First one, you can see it already on your screen right now. On the left side you have Broadway, on the right side you have 7th Avenue, but 7th Avenue is straight and Broadway runs in an angle. They're not symmetrical, they're not straight next to each other and the buildings on the sides of the Broadway sides have an angle as well and we're so limited when it comes down to creating angles like that in the game same way you want to build round shapes it's so limited as well and uh, when it comes down to angles you can make walls with a 90 degree angle you can make walls with a 45 degree angle but there's nothing in between and I needed that in between angle over here. So I use the same methods that I use when I'm doing these circle shapes as well. Later on I will tell you all about that other huge challenge. That other huge challenge was creating a look or a height in the game because we cannot build uh, higher than four levels high and of course I had to make skyscrapers later on all about that but now that angle yeah I use the same method that I use when I'm doing circle shape builds or round builds or round shapes round decks I if you saw any of my other videos I talked so much about this method that I'm using then and Kate Emerald made a great tutorial about it if you want to more in-depth information about it but it comes basically down to this and we're already on another part of the build but I still wanted to address it a little bit if you want to create a different shape that you cannot just make with just normal the normal angles in the game you want to cut out a certain shape certain angles and if you want if you play something over it that it looks like you made that angle i know this sounds very strange i don't know how to explain it that well <laughs> but i used a stone fence over here you can see you just saw it on the left corner of your screen i used a stone fence i placed that stone fence on the platform after that i made a shape 
Underneath that stone fence, I made all these different angles and corners in the deck, but all underneath that stone fence. And I followed the line of that stone fence. After that, I removed that part where I made all these different angles. And I lowered that stone fence a little bit down with the tool mat, but it isn't even that necessary to lower that fence down. In that way, all these different angles and corners are covered up by that fence and you can make angles like that. But in, this is all about platforms or decks. Of course, I had to make that angle in the different buildings on that side as well. I will tell you more about it when we are onto the buildings on that side. I'm starting with the first skyscraper now. In the middle, I already placed yeah, these four levels with a platform on top and with that, that debug skyscraper at the back. I just, I just will totally change up that look there. I just already placed it in there as a reference point. Uh, so I knew where I wanted to place all these other skyscrapers in as well. There are basically five skyscrapers in this build and they're all inspired or yeah made uh, as uh, how they would look in real life i made this particular part of times square it is the part of times square where the one times square building is in my humble opinion it's the most famous building on times square but i could be totally wrong i never went outside of europe never went to america new york <laughs> So all the information that I'm sharing now about Times Square, I got it all of the magical world of the internet. So maybe I will make some mistakes here and there. But I made this part of Times Square with one Times Square and with four skyscrapers around it. I'm building it on the biggest lot available in the game, on a 64 by 64 lot. And if I wanted to make Times Square in this entirety, the north side and the south side. I needed at least two more of these 64 by 64 lots to make this entire thing look longer. <laughs> so I used just this space that I had over here and of the part that I thought was the most famous part of Times Square. And I wanted to make it look as real as possible. So the skyscrapers that you can see, the particular one that I'm starting on right now, uh, Hard Rock Cafe Times Square is over here and the entire building really looks like how I'm building it over here as well so with the same color with kind of the same shape later on i will place clocks here and there and i could realize this look by using google street view yes google street view was my i had a love hate relationship <laughs> with google street view during this build it's the second time that i used google street view during building i did it during my amsterdam build as well for the same series and yeah, if you want to recreate something like this, a very famous building in the world, and that particular country allows Google Street View, Google Street View is amazing. It, is, it was my savior over here. Of course, I could zoom in on every single building. I could see every inch of every street corner, and I could really make this as similar as I wanted in the game. So that was amazing. I could just turn the camera around. Normally when I'm building, when I'm doing a real to Sims build, for example, from some kind of random villa, I only have a Pinterest picture from one side from the particular house. But with Google Street View, you can walk around the buildings and yeah, it's, it was an amazing tool over here. But oh it's such uh yeah how do i explain it when i can see every single detail on this google street view i'm such a perfectionist and i want to really place in every single detail and there's no end to it so yeah that's kind of my downfall when i'm using uh, google street view that's why this build took me hours and hours and hours. The last week I worked on, on this every single day from the moment that I woke up. And yeah, I love doing it. So it wasn't bad at all. But that street view, yeah, it really made me wanted to make this so much more realistic and so much more precise. But I think it's an... 
the easy tool to use and it's a tip when you want to recreate certain famous buildings or streets. I'm working on just a couple of parts of the street already, but in a couple of seconds I will start on the third skyscraper. And yes, that was another huge challenge <laughs> in this build, because in the game we can only build four levels high. And of course, skyscrapers have numerous levels, especially on Times Square. I think there are the uncountable levels on the skyscrapers. And of course, I wanted to realize that look in this particular build as well. Well, basically, you can build five levels high now in the game. You can build these four levels just by using walls. And after that, on the roof of the fourth level, you cannot build an, another wall anymore, of course. But when you place a platform over there and you click on that platform and you select the tallest level height, you can still raise up that platform as tall as that particular level height that you just picked. So now it looks like it's taller than these four levels. Of course, you can raise up a building as well. And in that way, you can make it taller too, because then you have that chunk of foundation underneath it. I use that method over here too. You can see that where I'm placing in the windows now, that's, that's the first level or basically ground floor. But I have that um, foundation chunk underneath it. I could get away with that in this particular case because I knew that I wanted to cover up that ground level where the foundation is over here. I wanted to cover that up with post-apocalyptic things, you know, like fences and dirt and trash bags and uh, like these wooden things. So every uh, all the shops were covered up. So that's uh, how I could get away with it. You can see a door in that foundation over there, the brown one. I placed it on the wall above the foundation and then I lowered it down with the tool mod. So it looks like there is a door in that foundation, but of course it isn't really there. But then I still had just that foundation level, these four different levels. That level, that fifth level, if you will, with that platform that I raised up, but it wasn't, it wasn't tall enough for me still to go as a skyscraper. So then I used these pre-made skyscrapers. They just came with the, yeah, with the game, but they are a debug items. You have to use a double cheat to unlock all these different debug items. First of all, you want to uh, hold Ctrl Shift C on your keyboard. And after that, you want to type in bb.show hidden objects. And after that, bb.show live edit objects. After that, just type a debug in your search bar, a debug in your search bar. And then you get a whole array of extra items. And these items that you can see then are basically the items. Uh, with these items, the creators of the game made all the different worlds in the game. So some of the trees that are not just amongst the normal trees in your build and buy menu, but you can see these trees in the world surrounding your lots and in the world where you're walking around in as a sim. They're probably between all these debug items. We have them now for I think a year or something and they totally changed up the building game. I use these debug items so, so much and Normally, when you use these cheats I was just talking about, they are not ordered in any kind of fashion. You can order them by pack, but you just have all of them not ordered. So the trees and the rocks and everything is just through each other. And I use them so, so much that I use a mod that sorts them all out. It's the Better Build By mod by Twisted Maxi. It doesn't influence the game or something like that. Uh, when I'm saving a build to the gallery, you can still pull it from the gallery, even if you don't have that mod installed. But it's such a time saver because it sorts out all these different debug items in different menus. So you can just find the trees amongst the trees. And you can just find the rocks amongst the rocks. And it just saves 
so it saves you so 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 much time so if you want to use these debug items a lot i recommend you to install the better build by mod but long story short in all these debug items there are pre-made skyscrapers as well they came with the city living pack and with get famous because when you are in the world that came with these particular packs, you can see these skyscrapers just in the worlds all around you. They're all shells, but you can see them all around you. And these particular skyscrapers, yeah, you can build with them as well. So the thing that I did over here with all the skyscrapers, I made these four levels, of course. I placed that platform on top. I had that foundation underneath it. But after that, where I couldn't build any higher, I placed in the skyscraper just on top. Or on the side, in this particular case, the building where I'm working on right now. Because I could use them to make this uh, lot even bigger as well. It is a 64 by 64 one, the biggest lot available in the game. I'm building it in San Michuno. That's the world that came with the city living pack for The Sims 4. And I thought it was the most fitting pack for this particular build. Um, there are a couple of 64x64 64 lots in the game. But we didn't got any new ones in the last all these last packs. Such a shame. I even want 100x100 100 lots. <laughs> But for now, we I think we have four 64 by 64 lots. One of them are in Windenburg. It's a more old European style pack. Uh, one of them came with the Jungle Adventure pack. So not fitting four times square setting at all, of course. And one of them is here. In some, which you know, it is in a park though. So maybe not... That's perfect, but still most fitting, but 64 by 64 and it felt like it was even too small for this particular build. And with the pre-made, the debug skyscrapers that I used, I could spill them a little bit off the lot. I still placed them on the lot though, but when I rotate them, because they were so big, they were spilling of the lot so yeah you can see it over here i built this particular building just almost at the edge of the lot later on you can see that i really will build it at the very edge of the lot but then i will place one of the debug skyscrapers that i sized down a lot at the edge of the wall it spills a little bit off the lot and in that way i had even more space over here the skyscrapers that i used of course, I could totally go the easy route with this build. Just place in five of these pre-made skyscrapers and done with it. <laughs> but of course, I didn't want to do that at all. So I really wanted to build where I could build. You can see it here too. I made these four levels. I placed the platform on top. I raised the platform up as high as I could. And now I'm placing in the debug skyscrapers. I took a good look at Google Street View and I picked the debug skyscrapers. You can see them in the bottom build and buy catalog. And there's so much more. There's so much of these debug skyscrapers. I took a good look at Google Street View and I picked the skyscrapers that were the most similar as what I could see on Google Street View, of course. These skyscrapers are normally massive and I sized them down as far as I could. So I combined just at the back here. And you can see it here, the spilling of the lot. I combined three of these skyscrapers together. And in that way, I made it look like this. So no, I didn't just place in these skyscrapers and was done with it. No, I made combinations with all these different skyscrapers. But of course, I had to make a blend between what I was building and these pre-made skyscrapers. So I had to pick some windows that were kind of similar, or kind of fitting. So I went for these particular windows on this build, they are on this particular skyscraper. They have that black frosted glass or the black colored glass. And I thought they were the, yeah, the most fitting. They would blend the best with the D-Box skyscrapers. They came with the spa day pack and I used so many windows. Oh my God, I think I never placed so many windows in one 
build. But of course, there are a million windows on skyscrapers. <laughs> but I thought they were the most fitting. This particular skyscraper that I'm building on right now, it was the most difficult one, especially because of the curved shape at the front. In all the different skyscrapers, there are more companies and shops, but the, uh, the thing that I had the uh, most in mind with this particular skyscraper is ABC Studios. I'm totally doubting between CBA or ABC Studios. So stupid. I think it's ABC Studios. Where Good Morning America is recorded every day in the center of the universe. <laughs> And uh, I wanted to make a television studios inside this particular skyscraper. And that studio has that, yeah, that, that curvy shape at the front. And I tried so many different things. I tried things with debug objects, with round shaped objects, but in the end just the curved platform forms were the way to go. The interior of this particular skyscraper, like I said, will be the studios where they record Good Morning America. And I wanted to make that look very desolate. And the entire setting later on, with the square as well, with all these chairs, I wanted to go for the look like people just were fleeing away. So chairs are tipped over. There's still boxes of food here and there. And I wanted to give that studio the same approach. I also wanted to give it a little bit of a fallout vibe <laughs> or maybe less of us. No, I think it's more a fallout vibe, but this particular building will be functional. You simply can enter it, you can enter it studio. If you want to do some post-apocalyptic gameplay, maybe you can sell the cameras that are still there and do things with it. I don't know. The building just straight across of it, where that Hard Rock Cafe will be, I will decorate that one as well. Like I said, there are so many different companies and uh, shops and everything like that in these buildings. But I made a hard rock cafe over there and all the necessities will be there. So there is an ethic with old music instruments and bo music boxes and things like that. And paintings and advertisement signs. But there will be some old beds as well. There will be an old kitchen over there and some toilets here and there. So this build will really be functional, so you can use it in your game and really play around with it. But the other two, or other three basically, but the two on the sides of one Times Square, the one where I'm working on right now and the one the opposite of that, I, I kept them kind of empty, not really, because the pre-made or debug skyscrapers that I will use will fill up everything, but I already spent so much time on the exterior of this entire build. You can see it in the length of the video. Oh my God, it's almost 50 minutes. It's by far the longest video I ever made. And I was just dreading it to decorate all the different skyscrapers in the interior as well. So I made two skyscrapers really functional. Uh, I'm building now on the Broadway side. I already did that ABC Studios one and now this one. Normally Nasdaq Marketplace is here. But yeah, on that Broadway side, of course, the walls of the skyscrapers here had to be in that angle as well. So you can see it here. The thing that I did, I already placed three walls in, just the straight walls. And after that, I made a platform just on the highest level. So uh, basically the fifth level is the platform. And then I made that shape, that line, that angle in that platform using that same method. I sized up a fence. I placed it in the angle that I wanted it to be. After that, I cut out that angle, all these different angles and corners of that platform that I just placed in. And because I had that stone fence over it, it looks like this is in an angle in that way. And I used that same method on that ABC Studios building as well. The difference over there is that I used a glass wall divider to make that wall in that angle. And I will do something similar over here as well. The 
pre-made debug skyscraper that I used here. I sized it down a lot too and it has that curved shape. And normally over here at the front is that Nasdaq sign, that Nasdaq marketplace sign. Of course, I will decorate it more and I will do a lot more with it, but it was easy for me that I already had that shape over here. Here I'm using that same method again. Can you see I'm placing in the skyscrapers on top. I size them down a lot and a lot and a lot. And after that I place at the edge. I just built that wall at the very edge of the lot as far as I could. And after that I placed in the skyscrapers. So they were spilling off the lot. I, I talked about the Better Build by mod that I use. It's by Twisted Maxi. Oh my god, so amazing. Totally changed up the building game. Same for its tool mods. Even better if possible. <laughs> and with the tool mod you can rotate items. You can lower them down. All things like that. And you can also place items off the lot. And I used that method before in previous builds. But then you really place an item off the lot. Uh, he made a lot of tutorials about his, his mods. So if you want to know more about him, he has a YouTube channel as well. If you want to mo know more in-depth information about these mods. But yes, where you, you could place really an item off the lot. But I just figured out that if I saved my builds to the gallery for you to download and use in your own game, when I did something like that with really placing an item off the lot, when you pulled it from the gallery, that item was obviously just dis it disappeared. It was so strange that I'd never realized that before. But of course, when I'm saving a building to the gallery, it saves what's literally on the lot and not what's off the lot. So I want to avoid using that method in the future. And now I'm placing these skyscrapers. They look like they're really off the lot, but I placed them on the lot, but because they are so big, they were spilling off the lot. So if you want to use this build in your own game, you can still see every single building. Well, working on the I think most famous building in Times Square, one Times Square. The entire square got its name from this particular building because years and years and years ago, the New York Times was, uh, was here in this building. I think they only were there for about 10 years and after that they moved, but the entire square got its name from the New York Times. It was there at Times Square. And now, it's so strange, found it on Wikipedia too. <laughs> and I know not everything on Wikipedia is true, but I found this too. The building is empty after that, just vacant after that. Isn't that strange? It's one of the most famous buildings in the world. It's the most expensive place for advertisements. It's one of these yeah, landmarks and it's vacant. <laughs> Only on the ground level uh, there is a pharmacy, Walgreens, with red signs. And I will place in these red signs later on as well. But besides that, the entire thing is just empty. So I kept it empty over here as well. That was very easy and uh, realistic decorating for me. But it just blew my mind that the most, one of the most famous landmarks most expensive places to place your advertisement at the particular building itself is empty. Uh, but yes, very strange. But I'm building on it right now and it has that angle as well on the left side. You can see it here and I'm using that same method again. Placing in a fence and these fences that I'm using here, they are fences from the debug items as well. I think this particular one is a base game one. And just making that shape in the platform and placing the fence in over there. You can see these small gaps here and there, but you cannot see them anymore when I decorate everything. It looks totally different when I yeah when I do that in that way. Or talking about that this entire building is fake in real life. Something that really stood out to me as well, and I really don't know why that, but in the, on the center of Times Square, and I will build it later on as well. So you can see I made these skyscrapers, but on the ground there are 
two small kind of rooms. I made them with these short walls. I placed one already on the square itself and just one at the front of one Times Square. One at the front of the one at the front of one Times Square will be a police station because in real life it's a police station as well. And in the middle is an army recruitment station. And I thought it was so funny that in the center of the universe <laughs> There is an army recruitment station for the American army. Yeah, <laughs> I thought it was very, very funny and I never knew that before. But yes, I, I will place it in later on too. The billboards that I'm placing in everywhere. This one has more of a police theme and I will place a lot more billboards in later on. You can see one on the right over there. They are all in a kind of post-apocalyptic theme. This one is a police theme. It's not really a post-apocalyptic, but I thought it would go post-apocalyptic. But the other signs are like advertisement for guns or uh, rockets or for the army or things like that for weapons. I thought it was very fitting and I wanted to go for kind of a gray yes, city color scheme of course but with some touches of red here and there later on when I decorate everything and especially when I'm doing the streets and uh, when I'm placing in all the cars everywhere you cannot really see that look anymore but my initial idea you can see it here it has a red accent and on the sides is to go for the more gray color scheme with red accents here and there. I will tell you more about it in a couple of seconds, but this particular item that I'm placing in right now, of course, on the front of the one time square, we're already on the other side, but at the front of one time square is that very long billboard and we don't have that in the game, of course. So I used a ripped flag and I placed it so it looked like it was a ripped advertisement I thought it was fun you can see here the particular billboards that I'm using and yeah I thought it was kind of fitting to go for these billboards in these post-apocalyptic post themes some of these billboards are these massive screens uh, they are not really just posters but screens and some of them are broken down I use these massive television screens for them and I use these cracks normally you can use them on walls but now in this particular case I use them on these massive screens to make it look like these these billboards were just broken down and there were not paper billboards you know but there were screens but I was just talking about that I wanted to go for the more gray color scheme with these red touches here and there. Uh, like in Schind Schindler's List was my inspiration for it. And I wanted to say I thought it was a lot of fun to do that. Fun and Schindler Schindler's List, of course, it's very strange to mention these two things in one sentence. It's not fun at all. It's an amazing movie, but... If you saw it, it's black and white and you have the girl with the red dress and that red coat. And I wanted to go for that almost gray, black and white color scheme with these touches of red here and there. So that's why I picked these particular signs and the colors for the particular signs. I just placed in that red sign on the wall and it was so satisfying for me to place in because it's the sign of Walgreens and it really looks like the sign of Walgreens. <laughs> so that was a lot of fun. Over here is the police station. I, like I said, I had Google Street View next to me and yeah, I wanted to make it as, yeah, how, how I explain it. As, as precise, as similar as I possibly could. Another funny thing, I would never even try to attempt to, <laughs> to do this build when I still had a schedule. I A couple of months ago, I had a schedule. I was always uploading two times a week, but it was causing a lot of stress for me. And I love building. I love every single minute of it. But sometimes I felt a little bit rushed and... I just, yeah, to cut, to cut corners here and there and 
I didn't want to do that anymore. And now because I didn't have a schedule, it fell. I didn't have any stress at all. I could take all the time that I wanted and I really worked on it every single day. And it was so much fun. And I would never try to do something like that if I still had a schedule. Okay, so over here in real life is a dead army recruitment station. I think it's a little bit funny, but well, uh, and I made it, it's totally just broken down, it's not functional at all anymore, it has this concrete, but everything inside is a broken down. The particular sign, I think it's something used to be a sign, I think it's something called like that, it's a debug item as well, and if I'm correct, it came with the stranger fill pack. And yes, in a couple of seconds, we will work on the entire street here. And just the setting of the square itself. And I thought long and long and hard about this. I found a lot of pictures online on Pinterest uh, from Times Square in post-apocalyptic settings. A lot of Japanese pictures in that style, but well. But uh, a lot of them were so, so, so overgrown with a lot of green everywhere. But I just told you guys that I wanted to go for kind of that looked like uh, something terrible has happened, but it was kind of coming already. People kind of knew about it already because all the billboards you can see already to uh, about guns and about weapons and things like that but when it really happens everyone just stood up and walked away you can see it over here as well in real life they're really red chairs like this <laughs> but some of these chairs are falling over and there still will still be pizza boxes everywhere i made these chairs fall over with the tool mat. so if i wanted to make it look very overgrown it will be way further in the future and I kind of could destroy that entire that grayish look that I wanted to go for with these red accents I was just talking about and when I did my first video in this series that London Bridge one I already made it so overgrown and yeah, this isn't really a different different post-apocalyptic setting, not like a new ice age or something like that, or everything is, is burned down or something like that. But I thought if I just plant on ivy everywhere and plants everywhere, it destroyed that, that grayish look that I wanted to go for. So I decided to place in some chunks of grass here and there. It's like a month or something, maybe two months after the apocalypse. So the plants were already on Times Square. You can see I placed in some plants here already. Later on, I will place grass all around these plants. And I will do the same thing with some trash cans here and there, where it could be possible to have some plants here and there coming out of. So not that overgrown ivy look everywhere. Yeah, I just, like I said, I just thought it could totally destroy that black and white with red touches look that I wanted to go for. The chairs that I'm just placing in are really there on Times Square in real life as well. And I made some of these chairs like falling over to same with the tool mod again. So now the cars. Of course, I wanted to go for that same thing. Everyone just got in a panic and ran away, got uh, outside their cars. And so it's just chaos over here. There are two of these army cars. So there's already was already something coming. It's not just all of a sudden apocalypse. There was already something coming. And this tipped over uh, army car there. It's really a tipped over item. I didn't use the tool mod for it. And it's an item that came with the stranger fill pack. The yellow cars that I used here are the only yellow cars in the game. And I don't want to use uh, custom content in my game and or in my builds. And in my mind, they could go as these taxis that, of course, are a lot in New York City. Every single picture that I saw, so many people and so many of these cabs. Oh my God. <laughs> so I wanted to place in some of these yellow cars as well. 
But yes, interior. This is the television studios I place in some platforms here and there. I use some boots on the floor here and yeah, I just wanted to make this look kind of creepy. I use this green screen and I never saw that I this item before, before I used it over here. It is an item that came with Get Famous and yeah, it's a green screen and when you place it in it becomes black and then you can uh, choose your different type of background so I thought it was very fitting to use over here I cut a lot in the parts where I'm doing the interior I always take a lot of videos record a lot of videos all after each other I take a lot of breaks and after that I just all make them all together edit them all together and in that way I can kind of keep track of how long a video is going to be as well. And this one was already 14 minutes long. <laughs> and yeah, I thought when I just get everything in a video, the entire interior that I did this would be over an hour. So I choose to make a decision to make, make some cuts in how I made the interior. But basically, yeah, this is ABC Studios with all the chairs, of course, all the equipment. And of course, there are four levels. One level above this is yeah, kind of a studio too. But above that, yeah, I, I secretly kind of went the easy road. <laughs> there are attics, and there uh, on these attics are old, uh, old, uh, old cameras and old things that you could use in a studio like this. Old cabinets and things like that. It will be the same case for the building on the other side where the Hard Rock Cafe will be. There will be a level with chairs, a level with the kitchen and with a stage. But two of these other levels, a lot of trash everywhere. And uh, on that other side, there will, some bed, there will be some beds here and there. You can still enter these levels. And of course, if you want to use the, this build in your game, you can do everything you want with these levels. You can decorate them again. You can do something totally different with them. Like I said, there are a lot of uh, equipment, there are a lot of items everywhere that have a lot of value. So maybe you can do kind of a rack to riches here and sell some items off. Of course, you can do your own thing with it. This is the interior for that Hard Rock Cafe. With some guitars on the wall, of course. A lot of very cool wall decorations that came with the Get Famous Back, these ones. So fitting for this particular style that I wanted to go for in this interior. But I basically made this interior to make this build functional. So you can really use it. Uh, you have to got to have a bed and a kitchen and a toilet and a shower and things like that in your on your lot. So uh, otherwise your sim could not survive over here. So that's why I placed this interior in here. But if I would play around with this lot, I think I would do some different things, especially with the upper layers of these buildings. It was so satisfying to place all these wall decorations in though. I used to be a bartender and I used to work in a very dark bar and we had all these signs on the walls as well. And yeah, it, it just creates a look immediately when you use signs like that. Well, over here is the stage with a piano later on and a microphone and on that other small room on the side of the stage will be the kitchen. So your sim can cook if they want as well over here. But yes, then we're almost at the end of this video. 45 minutes if you're still there. I'm so grateful. Thank you. <laughs> I'm very curious what you thought about this build and what you thought about this video and Maybe you're from New York, maybe you even went to Times Square once. Maybe you can tell me how I did with realism. Please let me know. I want to ask you guys the same question as during my last video. What do you want to see next? Do you want to see another post-apocalyptic one? I love doing these post-apocalyptic builds, so that would be, wouldn't be a problem at all. Or maybe you like to see a new video in that magic book series, or maybe something totally different please let me know in the comments down below 
I'm very happy that you were here and yeah, I cannot wait to talk to you guys next during my next video. I hope you will have an amazing day and we're into the outro already. Goodbye.